Hey friends, I'm Jeffrey Rickman. I'm a global Methodist elder, and Plain Spoken is kind of an effort on my part to uh, reclaim Wesleyan Methodist doctrine, not out of a sense of like factionalism, but it's like a really good tradition. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed a lot of uh, pastors and successful YouTubers doing is reaction videos. And so we started doing reaction videos a couple weeks ago. TJ Owens, this is TJ Owens. Hey, TJ Owens. Morning. Hi. Don't look so excited to be here, man. It's really... <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. If you can't tell, no, it's I'm I'm just not an exciting person, I guess. Yes, like I'm just yeah, feeling pretty. Well, chill. that's okay. That's okay. okay. You don't have to. I was. Woof, you let me just, let me put on my uh, YouTube. You're acting like you're not excited to be here, but you're the one who got all these clips together. Yeah, yeah. you're the one who did all this research. I talked to TJ a while back. One of the churches that I see getting attention, uh, negative attention. Uh, oh my gosh, can you believe they did this attention? Is called Transformation Church. It's an hour south of us in Tulsa. And I don't really know much about them. I just said, TJ, I'd like to know about them. And let's look at what they do. I try and have a sympathetic lens to what people are doing. It's a hard thing to proclaim the word. I struggle to do it accurately and well every week. I don't want to be dogpiling on anybody. But we're also living kind of in the Wild West right now. Like, there aren't any rules. And you have some crazy churches doing crazy things. Transformation Church, to my knowledge, is a uh, non-denominational independent church that uh, my impression of them has been that they are concerned with like a uh, certain cultural ethos rather than proclaiming the eternally true word of God. Of course, every local church is balancing the eternally true word of God versus the culture in which we are located and we fall in different places on this continuum. And of course, I have my own beliefs about where it should be um, I also can't help but notice Transformation Church does a, a really good job reaching black folks in uh, Tulsa, although I get the impression that it's a, a multiracial church. It, I mean, it is, but it's it's primary. Well, I don't know if it's primary. I've never actually been to it. Mm -hmm. uh, my fiance went there at one point. Her sister went there um, for a while, and we know a lot of people that went, went to Transformation. Even when I was going to Victory um, for school, a lot of people went to Transformation. It was it's, I mean, it's a big church around here. Huge, yeah. huge campus, um, and Mike Todd's pretty popular. But um, I, I want I want to say it's primarily black. Mike um, Todd is the main pastor. Yes, Mike Todd's the main okay. pastor. Yeah. So I know I, I know close to nothing about them. I I forgot until TJ reminded me that this is the one where the pastor spit on the eyes of somebody. So I, I reckon we're probably going to watch this. He had me go to the website before we got started today and just scrolling down it's it, like the first priority is get people watching worship live do you have any sense how big their live attendance is um attendance off is the head, viewership off, now i can look at their uh facebook page i had a bunch of their stuff pulled up uh, but it's it's fairly like uh, it's it's pretty big um I'll, especially during uh, covid they he got even bigger um online uh the church, i say him mike mike todd's the main um celebrity pastor um, so he's, he's, him and transformation are kind of like the same. Um, he didn't plant and build this church, did he? No, he did not. Okay. And we'll, we'll look at that on their website. Uh, it, it just gives a little bio of, of him and his wife. Um, and it just kind of, uh, gives us an idea of, we'll go to it right now. Go to about. Okay. And we can read that. Um, so here's the about page about our pastors. That's the picture. I assume that's Mike Todd right yeah, there on the Michael right. Yeah, Michael Todd and his wife, Natalie, and their kids. Very handsome family. Pastors yeah. Michael and Natalie Todd are the... Oh, man, I can't read that. Yeah, let me... I'll, I'll read it. Uh, Michael, pastors Michael Todd, Michael and Natalie Todd are the lead pastors of Transformation Church based in Tulsa, Oklahoma, since February 2015. They were entrusted with Transformation Church from the founding pastor, Bishop Gary McIntosh, after 15 Bishop. years of operation. Yeah, it's one of those, like... Bishop Were they blowing the shofar? No, no. They no, didn't no, no, install no. this bishop with I, the. I think this is shofar. If I remember right, Gary McIntosh is a white guy. Um, I, I just anybody that you can like, install a white bishop with the shofar. Well, then that's not to the. That's not show, the point. That's, yeah, that's not the, okay. that's not the point. All right, I'm gonna let the shofar um, go. Well, I, I brought up T.D. Jakes, and T.D. Jakes is a well-known um, black pastor. Okay, but that's irrelevant. Uh, anybody that says like has qualification like like bishop or apostle before their name red sure. flag automatically okay these, this is this is an independent church it's uh, an independent church so yeah. they've just ordained their own high ranking basically okay. yeah and I, I don't know if he went by that before when he was like the lead pastor like it's just a weird thing to do to me but okay. anyways we'll, back to the back to that Bye. um i found a way to see it where are we 
Uh, Bishop Mary McIntosh, after 15 years yeah. of operation, their personal philosophy and driving passion is rep representing, representing God yeah. to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. They aspire to reach their community, city, and world with the gospel presented in a relevant and progressive way. Do they mean progressive in the same way? I, I don't think they mean it in like a, a political sense. Um, necessarily. I, okay. I don't know what his um, underlying political affiliation is. I don't think he's super um, uh, political, but I would imagine he's slightly progressive, but not in the... Maybe a little bit in the. That's the only political. like immediate red flag I have, other than like it's signaling it's really interested. So relevant is a is a buzzword. Well, for relevant like, representing representing was a, a that just bugged me. I didn't read this until like this morning, and I'm like, ah. Uh, but he said that in some of his uh, some of his sermons. Like, well, representing. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. One of the sayings that I've I've heard and picked up over the years is, the church is always one generation away from extinction. So you have to represent the gospel to each generation. That makes perfect sense. I guess, but what does that look like? Well, that's the question. Yeah. That's the thing that I reckon, I mean, we're going to be responding yeah. to today. The last sentence was, uh, he and his wife have been married since 2010 and live in Tulsa with four beautiful children. So I would affirm all of that, and that sounds really nice. Yeah. Ooh, there's a culture code. Um, yeah, I'd... It's just, I feel like... Uh, Transformation, love, faith, an acronym HOT, humble, humble, open, and transparent. People of integrity. That that sounds nice. I mean, it's it's just one of those, like, oh, political... fun. We enjoy it all. Yeah. That's the last one. It's one of those... Uh, That's always a red flag for me. Oh, we're going to have fun along the way. We got jokes and skits and plays. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they're known for, like, big blowout plays, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, and we're not actually going to go over there. I didn't pull anything up from their last Easter service. Their last Easter service was what got a lot of attention, um, but I wanted to focus more. We're, we're going to focus a little bit on the like um, presentation um, in the first couple clips and then okay. hit theology a little bit on the last like three. So we've got five clips all together. We should um, acknowledge it says here that his wife is also a pastor. So they're, they're co-pastors, I guess, in some uh, Well, yeah, and then they've got a lot of uh, other pastors. Executive pastor... pastor. Another executive pastor. I don't know how much he actually preaches. Another executive pastor. Two, four, four other executive pastors. Yeah, that's a dude. All that's, right. Yeah, he, you know, like he's one of the uh, big ones too. Uh, Charles Metcalf. Yeah. Well, so they don't have what's his face on here. No. Who am I talking about? Um, who? Carl Lentz. Yeah, Carl, Carl Lentz. Lentz was Hillsong, in New York. He was. A he was big Justin Bieber's pastor. pastor yeah. Super. Vain into like fashion, but I mean, like all these guys are into they're fashion, all, right? They're all in the fashion. Um, Spending lots of money on. There was. Right. I was trying to debate on which clips to brought we we were going to bring up, and and one of them happened to be concerning his fashion and how he just uses it as a uh, um, like a uh, way to get people to talk to, to a conversation starter. Yeah, that's what he. You want to talk to me because I'm really cool. Or I'm really cool for he's Jesus. Interesting. Like his 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 fashion is like out there. Like so, it's like you. We we're like, well, we're talking about Carl Lentz. No, 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 we're no. Talking we're talking about, about Mike Todd. Mike Todd. But, okay. But Carl Lentz does the same thing. But this is the particular the particular clip I'm thinking of is him explaining why he does all of these, why he wears certain things, okay. and it's basically his 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 reasoning is to get a conversation started so he can then present Jesus to him. Okay. Whatever. Fine. Okay. I, That's one of the clips today. No, no, I didn't okay. bring that one up. So right. okay. I, I figured. Eh, well, I'll okay, react whatever. to that right now and just go. Bleh. You're not a not a fan of that. I, I mean, no. Nah, let me be worldly for the sake of reaching worldly people. Yeah, Give me a break. I thought it was a weird excuse. Like, I mean, do you do you hypothetically you could just talk to somebody about Jesus? You don't need a conversation starter. You might come off as crazy if you, you know, like jump them with that. So I don't know. I I didn't bring it up because I'm like it's whatever. I, I I understand the thought behind it. The problem is whenever you get into like Furtick level, spending a thousand dollars on a shirt. I don't know. That was a two thousand dollar sweater he wore. Yeah, stuff like that. Then that's 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 no. We're that's not cool. So, um, anyways, um, I don't think there's anything else to say on their on their website. Okay. Um, it's just. Uh, I mean, it's a nice website. They did a they did a pretty good job putting it together. Um, they've they've definitely got good social media people, good uh, technical people behind the scenes. So they have a good presentation online, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. It's impressive. 
Well, anything else to say before we check out today's clips that you I, selected I don't think us? so. Um, we can go right into it. Like I said, we've got five of them. Um, okay. Uh, the first two are the, from the same sermon. Um, and I actually brought this up thinking I would have an issue with it, and I don't think I have that much of an issue with it. So let's get into it. I'm going to move this out the way because we don't need these clothes no more. I need everybody to see this. Yeah. If this is the temple, the house of God, I'm just going to start acting how we be acting with our bodies in the house. My favorite is Chinese food and ketchup. Gross. Come on, Why are you so bothered? <laughs> Who going to clean so it? <laughs> yeah, this is just the house of God. It's just a house. Is this a house? Just a house. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I lift my hands in the sanctuary. I lift my hands to give you the glory. I lift my hands to give praise. And we will praise you. Don't care so much. Don't it's just a so temple. Much. Just a temple. I said I didn't have an issue. This, I guess this gets me all over the I communion. Have. Don't care so much. Right there. Over the Bible too. Y'all stop acting like you care about this. Let me man, stop acting like this matters to you. On the picture, I need to do some artwork on the picture. Uh oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, you can stop there. That, oh, you basically, you oh. get the idea. That might be one of the rest. I kind of do. I don't know. What, what is he it's doing with demon? Ooh. Well, so the next clip is his redeeming it. But when I got he's into throwing the rest of the, the food mess, it affected the, the way I walk outside the, uh, of it. This whole clip is him just throwing food? Oh, yeah. Oh, he got it on his. It's not even the shoes. place where the Holy Spirit is dwelling. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I wish he'd say a temple of the Holy Spirit, but it's still on me. There's a little bit on me, huh? I ain't even see it until I looked in the mirror. Ain't no napkins up here, but I love pizza and egg rolls. Not together. He's just, he's Couple making a mess sausages. for like 10 minutes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's healthy. He's cutting up. Okay. What does we eat? Three meals a day. And every time we do this, nobody says nothing. Is he talking about the American diet? Pretty much, yeah. He's basically saying you trash your body. If, if somebody did this to a church, you would be appalled. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, your, your body's a, I thought the, he was making a statement about like how disrespectful people are about church nowadays, but yeah. no, that's not his sermon. Okay. No, no, it's it's a lot of a lot of uh, showy stuff for sure. Um, uh, but I mean, he's like, well, he, he'll say it, he'll say it in this, but essentially, um, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. Treat it right, like. You're trashing your body. If somebody came in and trashed your church, you would be upset, upset by it. Yeah. And throw a fit and fight somebody. Um, but you go around, you you eat Chinese food all the time. You eat these Cheetos and all this garbage and you're just like poisoning yourself and nobody bats an eye. So I'm like, OK, that's a good point. It's a little showy for me, but. Well, OK, I'll let him bring it home. OK. In this and then we'll 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 do some dissection. What I'm trying to say is God is almost always, God is always more concerned about your body than any building. Yeah. Great. Great. If somebody did this to your church, if y'all saw somebody in the lobby doing this, y'all would physically fight them. Like I already know y'all, but why would you be more concerned about trash they put in a building than the trash you put in your body? Do you know the one time God was really mad about how people were treating the temple? 
Y'all remember where he picked up the whip and started? Why did he do that? It's because people were doing things in the temple that weren't supposed to be there. This message is not about body image. It's about God's image. The scripture says you can't love your neighbor until you evaluate how you love yourself. And the truth of the matter is some of us, if we take off our clothes and we are bare in front of the, the, the mirror, we do not like what we see. We are insecure. We don't. And then we project that on other people. And what I'm saying is this is not something we need a miracle for. This is something we need to decide. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I don't have anything bad. Oh, okay, so here's, here's nitpicky things I would say. It's just like, that was probably, what do you think, $1,000 worth of damage that he did? Oh, yeah, close to that. I mean, between the the food and trash in the chairs, um, I mean, they're not probably not going to reuse the wall, and I'm sure those are, like, cheap photos on that, so maybe, yeah. And he, I mean, he got some on his clothes, so he's probably going to have... Dry clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess if you're adding all that stuff up, sure. So $1,000 worth of damage th- that was, like probably eight minutes on a sermon illustration Mm -hmm. is that eight minutes and thousand dollars worth the point that he made maybe because he's trying to give people a subjective experience of the anger that they should have right about trash in their bodies but they their their consciences have been seared about it so he has to do something wrong something crazy yeah to get them to see it the way it actually is. That makes mm. perfect sense to me. Yeah, like I said, I, th- I thought I was going to have an issue with this. And I'm like, oh, no, that's a good that's a, that's a a good point. Yeah, maybe he spent a lot of money doing it. But like I said, they 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 bring in a ton of money and they give out a lot of money. Like I, they've paid off debts, hospital bills for um, people in the community. Like they they give out a lot of money. So I'm not I'm not bashing them on that. So it's awesome to be made of money. Yeah. <laughs> all right uh, i don't know that i have anything else to say about that uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm not gonna say anything bad say. about it yeah, uh, yeah i, thought I don't kinda... like waste i don't like when pastors spend forever we were looking at the length of the sermons yesterday briefly and the sermons this guy preaches are sometimes over an hour or oh yeah 20 minutes. like an hour and a half was like i feel like the average yeah um so they're pretty long and people people stay for them so, so yeah if you've got people for an hour and a half then you can spend eight minutes on a sermon illustration yeah yeah, he's very he's very charismatic. Like, I mean, people people like him, so obviously, or he wouldn't have such a big church. Um, so this next clip is the one we were talking about the the spit one. Um, Ugh, okay, it's an, it's another just like demonstration, and uh, I don't know if we'll. Oh, I guess we can go through the whole thing, um, but let's let's start it. The reason he took him out of the village, thank you, Holy Spirit, yep, yep, yep. was because the work that he was about to do, others would misinterpret it. So he had to get him outside of what was comfortable. So he's talking about Jesus' so miracle where he actually the level of the, submission yeah. and humility that was about to Rubbing He wasn't a, going to man, not though. spit on him, but he just didn't do it in front of everybody because he didn't want their reputation or his reputation to be tarnished by what he had to go that's through to receive on? the miracle. Yeah. As in he says that's his little brother, so he's done this before. Like, he's aware of it. It's not some Jesus random guy. Jesus you good, brother? <laughs> He's going to hop. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, he is. Gross. (laughs) Now watch. He can't see, but he can hear. You can hear him hopping. Okay. And this is the moment where many of us are in. Is that God is doing something and we hear him. Changing. We hear him even in your prayer. And in this time, he's changing something and you don't see it clearly yet. But you hear. <laughs> oh, okay. Double <laughs> down. <laughs> and this is where most people would not face Jesus anymore. What most people would do is turn. Away. (laughs) Come on, man. (laughs) What what I'm telling you 
what I'm telling you is just as he's physically standing here, knowing what's coming. God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally be able to stand when getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty? I'm going to say it in a point just like that. Receiving vision from God might get nasty. You mean, God, I just bought in crazy faith. I just bought my dream car. And now you're going to ask me to sell it back and ride in the hoop day again? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. Oof. I'm not watching. I'm That's just right. watching you, buddy. Yeah. Oh, do you, wow. I, do you hear get all up in there? See it's, the yeah. responses oh, of the people. Okay. I looked. What, what, what I'm telling you is how you just reacted is how the people in your life will react. When God is doing what it takes for the miracle, what are you saying? This man was blind. And what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. What I just did was take, do y'all know how they, <sighs> do you know how they prove if somebody's related to each other? Is they get a swab of their saliva because the DNA on the inside of this person can tell me if these two people are in fact related. God said for me to change your situation that is blurry and unclear. I've got to put my DNA on your situation, on your 2022, on your plans. So is this like literally watch this, watch this, watch Uh, this, watch this. this. He's blind. Ah, and so many of you right now are so bothered. Like literally some of y'all can't even look. Yeah, probably. How many of y'all can't even look right now? But this is what it will feel like when you built the house and decorated it fully. And God tells you to downsize this year. Okay, that's that's good. So, okay, go ahead. I I was just going to say, I think he's reading a whole lot into that particular story. I mean, he's, he's, there's definitely a lot of ice to Jesus there. Um, He's got a sermon that he needs and he's, he's fitting that story into it. Oh, I said Jesus. Okay. What do you think I said? I see Jesus. No, I see Jesus. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it just gets it just gets weird in the DNA thing. I'm like, what? What? So, I mean, so DNA was not a concept in the ancient world, but right. even so, it's a very helpful. So, okay, is there any outright heresy here? I don't think so. Um, I don't like the materialism stuff. Hey, I had a nice car. Right. You're making me drive the hoopty yeah. again. Oh, I had a nice house. I mean that that kind of overlaps with prosperity gospel, even if it over, you know kind of undercuts it, saying it's not about material. Right. But also, he seems to like um, the the blind, but now I see thing is not hey, there's a situation in my life I'm not seeing well, and he's gonna give me clearer vision. It's I can't see, I'm dead in my sins. He's gonna give me new life. That's that's the fullness of that message. Jesus, you know, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I mm-hmm. once was lost but now i'm found was blind but now i see like yeah. that's not a that, there wasn't a whole lot of that at all in that in that sermon like there's in the no, language that he used it was if you've got a situation in your life that's blurry and god's going to give you clarity right. this is the process it goes through that's like a self-help sermon oh yeah that's but, a, a lot of what he does is self-help sermons like he's a, he's a Stephen Furtick pastor um it's a, a moral therapeutic deism um it's yeah, it's self-help stuff. Well, so if he if he had just stuck with, I mean, so again, he uses a very shocking thing that has a decent theological message, which is, I mean, it is disgusting to get somebody spit on you. Right. But uh, so there are ways in which when the world looks at the process of salvation, sanctification, what it takes, I mean, you have to de- debase yourself when you come to Christ and acknowledge, I am born in sin, wretched, unable to save myself. That's right on the front end. That's like the most embarrassing thing 
whether or not other people see you do it is really beside the point. It's just admitting, like, I was not born perfect. I'm mm-hmm. really messed up. I am dead. I cannot save myself. That's much harder than just getting spat on, you know. But we look at that like it's easier, and it's somehow like, oh, God can never debase me. No, he yeah. requires you to debase yourself, like, right on the front end. And so if you are so turned off by this that you can't even function, well, are you even saved? You know, and as you read the story about Jesus debasing someone, spitting on them, like it does seem like we've created this church culture where we talk about these things, but it's like, oh, no, but God doesn't require us to ever go through anything hard or right. disgusting or embarrassing. And I mean, Jesus, for Christ's sake, he, he hung naked on a cross in front of everybody, completely debased. Yeah. And we, then like we th- imagine that we get to maintain our dignity throughout this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, we like to throw a loincloth on it, and uh, yeah. he's, he's probably naked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's just, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, I think it's a solid sermon illustrate. Am I going to do it? No. You know, yeah. I think, I mean, I'm of a tradition that just says, let the word speak truth and forget about this whole show. But no if you are going to have a show. Representing. Oh, so this would be the representing Yeah, thing. yeah. Hmm. Well, and then like, I I should have brought up his his uh, uh, Easter the Easter Easter thing. The Easter thing was not not good. Um, it was a the show. Yeah, yeah, it was a show. Um, it was not good. Um, but I didn't bring it up. Um, well, I remember people were incensed about the spit on the face thing. Uh, yeah. we, we argued about it at the time. I, do you, I, can't remember. I, I vaguely remember it. I, uh-huh. And I don't think I even watched the sermon, the whole sermon. Okay. Um, I mean, it's an hour and 30 minutes just for this <laughs> sermon uh, uh-huh. in particular. And there's a lot of points that are just uh, are out there. But, um, yeah, I don't remember how we what we came to when we argued about it at all. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, good this is another one of the showy so, things. So, well, yeah. okay, so, so this next one, you're setting this next one up? Um, yeah, the the next one is basically about tithing. Um, it's a weird, these are more uh, uh, theology Oh, I see all the money on issues, the table. Issues, like, uh, th- so this is at the end of a end of a sermon. It's about just tithing in general. Um, at least this part is. Okay. Um, but, yeah, let's go ahead and watch it. You can't purchase a breath. You can't regulate your arms moving. You can't. Everything we have is a gift from God. And all he's asking is, when you get this little green stuff that people put value on, honor me by setting aside what I've asked to be set apart for me. Starts off good. Who's that girl? I don't know. I think she's This won't even look fair. But it's not fair because God don't play fair. He wants you to see that you can never outgive him. Can I say something to you that you maybe never thought of? Jesus was God's tithe. He sent his only and his first son on a maybe so that he could get an entire family of people to believe. It doesn't take faith to, ser- to, to sow something after you already know you got it. Yeah. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, gave it first. Well, y'all he said this sending a- Jesus was a maybe, like it might not work? Yeah, so uh, sending Jesus was a maybe um, to get everybody else in his family. Um, and then, yeah, Jesus was God's tithe. Like, what, what does that mean? So literally, the the biblical word means tenth. A tenth, yeah. And surely he would not say that Jesus is a tenth of God. Um, I don't know. Surely so he I, just means it in a broader sense of like, here's my offering for the mission. So I, I feel like he says a lot of things um, that are not really thought out, and that would be one of them. Like, what are the theological implications of? Jesus being a well, no, he thought God. it out before he said it. He said, "Can I say something to you that you might not have never thought before?" You know, like he really put a lot into this uh, idea. Maybe like a shallow thought, but I don't think it's like depth. Like, okay, what? And no, because that gets into uh, what's that? That it's not modalism. Um, Jesus is only kind of God. Like, uh, I don't know the. I don't remember the. A name lesser of the God would be Arianism. Is that Arianism? Yeah. Okay, so. 
like a, a demigod or yeah, like okay. a secondary yeah, 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 yeah. god. So if that's the yeah, Arianism, then then that's basically Arianism. But I don't think I don't even think he knows what Arianism is. Well, maybe. I mean, he probably does. So, uh, how long has he been doing this? Um, what did it say? Fifteen years. Well, no, the guy before was fifteen years. Was it two thousand five? On the website, oh, I don't said. remember that. Um, it was two thousand fifteen. So this is okay. twenty twenty four. Is nine years. Um, before that, I think he. You was don't a, think he's cared to study historic heresies? No. Okay. Well, maybe maybe as a well, side like okay, so, issue, but but before before this, he was a. I think he was a youth pastor, and in okay. a lot of his interviews, he says. Um, uh, basically I got up, I, that whenever they made me, um, senior pastor, um, I had no idea what I was doing. So I just started throwing something out there. And whenever he was a, a youth pastor, I think his parents were pastors. Um, he would, he, he was just kind of thrown into it and he's like, I don't know what I was doing. I'm just saying stuff. And a lot of it was heretical, but I was just doing it because that's where God put me kind of thing. And I'm like, uh, no, stop it. And I, 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 maybe he studied some. Um, church history, but I don't. I don't feel like I see it in his sermons or see it in what I've what I've seen. And I, and well, I, so we come out of another tradition where there are seminary trained people preaching heresy, and it's yeah. not for lack of knowing it; it's just for lack of caring about it. They've right. got they've got a concern. They've got a message they want to say. They need to skirt up against or even cross over that line into heresy in order to get people to understand. I wouldn't. I wouldn't flinch at all if you told me he was fully aware of the Aryan concern and he's just not concerned about that at all he's concerned about getting people to to give with the right heart and so the underlying theological argument he's making is good we give back to God because he gave first we return love for God that he gave us for he loved us first so we love him back mm. similar you know a lot of people might say well I don't have to give him money because he never gave me money first and he's going well he did model the tithe as I would say he modeled sacrificial giving mm -hmm. by sending his only begotten son. Like that's the most painful thing anyone's ever given for the salvation of others. That's a that's a I mean, I wish he'd said that instead of Jesus right. was his tithe, because it was far more than a tithe. When you when you look at what Christians did on the day of Pentecost and afterwards, they didn't give a tithe, they gave a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's what God gave. And it wasn't on a maybe, it was on an only. It was on a <laughs> And it, he yeah. said, God wants this. God doesn't not get what he wants. Right. God demands this. Well, and and it, he has done everything needed for and our it salvation. Wasn't a, it wasn't a maybe. Like, whatever he does is done. Like, it's exactly. not like, ah, oh, let's he try sovereign. this. And, yeah, let's try this and hope it works. I'm like, going to hope no. the humans respond well, but if not, we're all screwed. Yeah. You know, that's not how, that's not what we've got in the Bible. No. Uh, is, there, is there anything else to say about that? I don't Nothing. I could probably say a lot more things, but let's go on to the next one. Is he uh, wearing a sweatsuit? Uh, something like that. Uh, just his fashion thing. Um, this one, yeah, this one's just weird. I, I came up on this one um, just kind of by accident, and I'm like, oh, that's a weird thing to say, but let's get into it. People, watch this. It's not just the only gift you can give to God. It was what you were created to do. <laughs> I can't believe he's wearing that. I'm preaching. <laughs> I need everybody to understand you are not created to set up a, 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 a pension plan and make sure that your kids live in a great house. Okay. I'm just Starts trying to make good. it out the mud. You were formed from dirt. <laughs> what do you say? Like, 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 I want you to understand that he blew oh. into dirt. And I'll have to do this later, but he, he made you the replacement for Satan. Only one archangel got kicked out and was never replaced. And what? it was the one who was over worship. The one that was over worship. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that next week. Did you do it next week? All I'm saying is God <laughs> made you the replacement. Week. So every time you worship, you remind the enemy of the spot he can never get back to. <laughs> You this remind so him that he lost his place in heaven. The reason he's been coming after you so hard and trying to steal your worship is because every time you lift your hands, despite how bad you feel, and every time you say hallelujah, even when they hating on you, and every time you say, God, you're faithful, even when you don't have finances, you're punching the enemy in the face. Man, I can't get over that suit. We were something. watching a little clip yesterday, and he was preaching in a hat like you're wearing. And I was just yeah. like, man, you can't preach in a hat. You can't I preach did, in a sweatsuit. And I didn't even think about it. Like, I know we pray, take it off, 
in, well, I don't even, I don't know where I had to church. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't even realize it whenever you said that. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess Well, yeah, he you've is. already gotten used to seeing yeah. him in more, I mean, how do you take a man seriously in an outfit like that? Seriously. Uh, it's fashion, Jeffrey. That's fashion. Count me how out. How dare you? <laughs> uh. Um, so what, what is it? It's, okay. Satan kicked God out. Or not Satan. God, God, God kicked God Satan, kicked Satan out. out. He was the uh, minister of worship in the, the, the archangels. Where did he get that from? I don't necessarily agree with this, but the, the verse that they use is Ezekiel 28, 13. And it's only in a certain translation. So if you read the NIV version, it says something completely different. But so if you read the, read the New King James Version, it says, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, topaz, and diamond, uh, barrel looks, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you the day you were created. Now, that workmanship could also mean work. It's the same one in Genesis 2, 2 that says God rested from his work on the seventh day. Um, so they use that. He's got timbrels and pipes, so he must be, I and mean, he's an angel, obviously, so he's probably up there leading worship. I think that's the only like reference that I've ever heard used, but that's the idea behind it. So... He's obviously picked up on this argument that, or this idea that Satan was an archangel and an archangel over worship, um, and whether he knows the. I'm not, not impressed with this argument. So when when you have the heavenly host depicted in Revelation, all of them are praising God. Right. So it seems much a much safer assumption to imagine that Satan himself. Well, it doesn't. Ever, was one of many archangels who are. Consistently praising before God. Well, it doesn't even say he was an archangel. I don't remember anywhere saying it was an, he's an archangel. That's specifically. That's tradition. He, okay. So the so according to Michael Heiser, Eden was on a mountaintop paradise where he had something akin to the tabernacle, where he was constantly meeting with the divine council because our God shares authority by nature. He shares sure, it in yeah. the heavenly realm with the sons of God and and with humans, but then. Uh, Satan was one of those original archangels that was considered part of God's divine counsel, and he rebelled for one reason or another. You know, mm-hmm. and the, a lot of ink has been spilled for that. There are just too many. Okay, so uh, again, with all this guy's preaching, okay, worship, our worshiping the triune God displeases Satan. Yes, great. Right. But to create this whole systematic theology where from this little nerdy tidbit over here, and when you look at it at this certain light, it sure seems like we can draw these huge conclusions, and you are a replacement for Satan. Man, what an offensive thing to say. Hey, so well, Satan was here to, to lead worship, and now when you worship, you're replacing Satan's original purpose. That is really a stretch. Yeah, that's that's a, a little bit. And like, I, I don't know if there's an underlying, oh, whenever we get to heaven, you'll become an angel thing. Like, that's not a, that's not a thing. A lot of people believe that. That's, that's not true. That's no. not true. So... We will be like the angels in heaven, Jesus says, in a sexual sense. But no, we're we're not going to become angels. In a sexual sense, and we're not married. Uh, yeah, and seemingly given not sexual, uh, sexually well, active. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah. So, but to say, I mean, okay, in a certain sense, it was Satan's job to worship God. He rebelled. We have taken his place alongside all of creation that is supposed to be praising. It's just, I, he's... I, my concern here is he's making people feel more important than they actually are. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. God does not need our praise. He does require our praise, but it's not like... <laughs> he's Man, there was really away. this black hole once Satan abandoned, and now we're filling in that hole. And yeah. uh, I mean, God doesn't need that. Yeah, yeah. We it's, do it because it's right to do, not because God needs it. Yeah, this is a weird argument. Yeah, it's a really weird thing to say, especially yeah. in a sweatsuit. <laughs> That's really gonna get you. Um, I, man, okay. I can't get over that. I don't think there was anything else in that that particular. Here we go. At least he's wearing suit. a suit jacket. Okay, in so in, in this one, this is one of the one big ones that got him got him in trouble. Um, uh, it's concerning homosexuality and transgenderism, um, things like that. So, oh, fun. Let's, yeah, let's get into that. We'll one. Finally, save get the, to do that. Save this one for last. Okay. You you value your opinion of it. More than you value God's, <laughs> not just opinion, his decision on it. 
God's already decided some stuff that we think we have, can have an opinion on. That's true. I, yeah. Starts off good again. Is that beer group? I'm trying to decide yes. right now, Cordell, how much I'm going to get him to try to. <sighs> and that hairstyle would take so God much work. Decided. Maybe. Male and female. Who's on his shirt? Uh, so God decided. No, no, no. I'm not. This yeah, is not fair. a bad. Yes, I need y'all he to did. hear my heart yeah, he on this. This is not a bashing. This is not a. He. If I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a like a little maybe if yeah, somebody. Track. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Well, I was born like this. I don't know how I feel. That I, I feel you. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. In culture, you can make up whatever you want to. In culture, you can build whatever you want to. But it's the truth of the matter is that. If we are going to submit under what the king says, I'm going to have to wrestle with what I don't even fully understand. Oh, God. The pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I know, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. No, I'm serious. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know. You don't know, huh? But I do know in the kingdom. Uh, They're going to cast me. In the I'm not the king. I don't, I don't know why he decided to do it like this. I don't know why you're wrestling like that, and I don't know what to do to help you, but to stand with you and pray with you and not, and you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title, Transformation. You can be here. Oh my gosh. Oh God. (laughs) You're what, you're loved here? I want you here. So that makes me think when he says progressive, it is partly like in the church. Will I marry you? I, I can't, not because I don't think you found love. Just as a kingdom ambassador, when I look back at the orders that are in the constitution of the kingdom, I know people don't talk like this because they want it to be black and white, but there's some things on this earth I don't have the answers to it. And so when I don't know, I just default. I come sub to the mission. I know people are going to try to make this clickbait and make it something I didn't say. I hope you hear the heart of what I'm saying. I, I wrestle and pray for all type of people all the time. Because how freaking... A nice plug. Yeah, yeah no, that was unfair. It must feel. <laughs> By the way, to feel this point something every day of your life, and it not line up with the God you love. I don't have all the answers. My wife used to work in the in the makeup community. There's tons of people who have different identity um, associations in that community. And one of her favorite people in there oh, was, like, Keep me on was on? Okay. a homosexual well, we can there, male. There's the not me. Yeah, there's 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 a lot. Of, there's too much to even cover in there. That one is really rich with a lot of things worthy of correction. In that one, man. Yeah. So um, he starts off good. He does say <clears throat> he says he doesn't he, he doesn't know personally about this stuff, but he does know the biblical position on it. And while he might not know personally he's going to submit to what the biblical position is. Well, okay, so he says we have to wrestle with these things. Wrestling is kind of the opposite of submitting. And I know True. that well, he kept Israel wrestled with the angel of the Lord in the middle of the night, and so we kind of like make that a holy thing to do, to wrestle. But the, the point is not eventually just to submit to what the Lord says, 
but to love the Lord and his, his commands. Yeah, even though we might not agree with them. Well, I mean, you should agree with them because it's God. So, Well, in the end, yeah, like he is sovereign. I am not. He, he alone is good. I am not. There has to be a sublimation of the will to him and his ways. And mm-hmm. when I just can't make sense of it, if if the ending place is I don't like it, but that's in the rules, I yeah. gotta follow the rules. Like I'm that not is not the bad a good guy, place to be. But God's the bad guy. I felt like that's what he was doing the whole Kinda, time. Like, yeah. oh, you blame it on God, don't blame it on me. I'm just doing what God says. And yeah. I think that's a that's not a good argument. That's uh, you're supposed to be an ambassador for God, but you don't agree with God. That's no. Yeah, that's a dangerous place to be. Well, okay, and so what I think the good news is to trans people who identify as different than how they are. A very innate part of human existence is alienation from self, whether or not it be sexual, you know. But it's a very normal thing that people of all cultures and ages deal with is a deep dissatisfaction with self, feeling alien from self. And the unique thing that Christianity has to offer is sublimate yourself to Christ. Christ is yourself. He died for you. Christ in me is the mystery of all creation. And that's what we have to offer that gives freedom from, oh, I need to figure out my sexuality. I need to figure out my gender. I need to figure out... No, you don't. You don't need to spend your life wrestling with these things. They're, your life is best lived in in sublimation to the divine. And part of that is around sex and gender and all this. But it's it's everything. It's It's all of that. And so if we start engaging sympathetically with a culture that wants to negotiate inalienable things, and then use synthetic means to make them alienable. Mm. Like, that is the opposite of the gospel. That's a warping of the distinct way of, of, of Christ that embraces alienation from self for the sake of being closer to Christ. So, uh, yeah, this is, that's the, the, of all the clips you showed me, that's the only one that really bothers me, yeah. because he is inverting the gospel and preaching a false gospel there. And just, in the end, I mean, this is kind of what you get in the side B community, which is like, God made you this way. We don't know why, but you can't use it. And, uh, you know, God don't make no junk, so, so you yeah. have to run with it. Yeah, so the, the side B thing, that's that's somebody like that identifies as a, a gay Christian mm-hmm. rather than a Christian who, like, who struggles, struggles with, with homosexuality. Same-sex attraction. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're making, you're still keeping that identity and then Alongside tagging, Christ, yeah. Yeah, tagging Jesus along to it, um, which is problematic. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Either you die to self and Christ lives in you or you keep trying to stay alive in spite of the fact that Christ requires that you die. Mm-hmm. In spite of the fact that baptism is a death, mm-hmm. you know. So the, yeah, there is no I I appreciate people who have energy for engaging the culture around apologetically, sympathetically, but you cannot ever compromise the purity of the gospel to do that. And I start wondering about the psychology of this. Like, I notice his hairstyle is very feminine. So I wonder, he's speaking to trans people. He's saying, can I be a third sex? Uh, like, I think he's just trying to occupy this. It's just, it's just braids. I don't It's like dreadlocks. I don't see it as feminine, I guess. All right. Yeah. I had long hair when I was... Uh, my, well, you my, know, my I did too. Was, uh, I guess I don't remember that. I'll I'm sure I've seen picture. pictures. Um, anyways, let's, let's anyways. post pictures of me and you with long oh, hair. Oh gosh, at the end no, of this let's, video. Not. let's not. <laughs> Yours was emo. Mine was like caveman. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and yeah, I don't. I, his hair didn't. I, I don't think he's like trying to um, so sub, like subconsciously connect with trans people because he's got braids. That's that's just a hairstyle. I that's think a he, nice I beard. think he, well, you know, whenever he is just waiting on our words about his church, he can respond to us about what was in his head. We're, we're, we don't think he's going to watch oh, this. No, gosh, the no. whole reason that we did this was we know that a lot of churches, global Methodist, Methodist otherwise, are, are doing ministry alongside these huge corporate churches like um, Elevation Church and Transformation Church and Hillsong and yeah. all these, and they are trendsetters. And um, the the tendency on our end is just to poo poo everything that they do because we're jealous or something, um, and that's not the answer. We we need to have discernment to look at different traditions and say, okay, here's the good, here's what they get right, mm-hmm. and then here's the things that really uh, are not helping. You know, so that as people get churned through these churches and then come into ours, 
Or, what or are, like still like watch him on the weekends or something. Like he's like he's got a big oh, online right, right, ministry. Right. So like, yeah, there are a lot of people in our pews that worship with us on yes. Sunday, but their primary indoctrination is spending an hour and a half with this guy every week, right? Yeah, or somebody like him, you so. know. So knowing what's wrong with that. You know, we have a, a young couple in our church that have been surrounded by a certain type of theology all their life, and they're kind of tentatively coming to me like, okay, well, what's right about this? What's wrong about this? Mm. And pastors, I mean, that's your job. And it's not just pastor's job, but it's especially pastor's job to know what's right about what other churches do and know what's wrong and to know true doctrine and false. Like, you have nothing more important to do in your life than identify what is of God and what is of not, not of God in your life. So that's the whole point here. Um, uh, the general, f- I mean, wrapping up my assessment of, of that church and their pastor, I mean, he's doing a great job making the things that are supposed to be uncomfortable, uncomfortable mm-hmm. for people. Yeah, you there's know? a lot. There was a surprisingly a lot of good stuff in there. The problem is the little, the bad here and there, which needs to be worked out. That's, that's, yeah, that's the whole point of this. So... I, I'm done. Do you have any closing thoughts? I have, yeah, no, I have nothing. Just be aware of uh, stuff like this. Uh, if you've got clips that you want us to watch, that'd be great. Um, yeah, send us your stuff. Yeah, uh, you're particularly concerned about certain things. We'll we'll go over it. So I'll let you wrap it up. That's that's all I've got to say. All right, friends, it's been swell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.